going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor here, and today we're going to be looking at my new bike, the Giant Rome 2, the 2021 edition, and this is the American edition. There is a difference there with a few things that I'll talk about. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to purchase this bike brand new. As anyone can tell you, if you try to purchase a bike recently, it is almost impossible to find a bike at your local bike shop. This is an amazing bike. We're going to be looking at some of the specs. I've had this bike for a couple of months now, so I'll be talking about some of the things that I really like about the bike and a few things that I'm not crazy about, but honestly, this is an amazing bike, so there's not a lot of things I don't like about it. So let's start with the price. When I first bought this bike a couple of months ago, they actually just raised the price to $850. That was before taxes. So after taxes, I ended up paying around $900 for this bike. And that is with not even a kickstand. That was just the bike itself. Uh, I did have some accessories that I later added to it. But as you can see right now, this is the Giants website as of today. Uh, they raised the price again to $880. I guess because demand is so high and their supply is so low for these bikes. So again, uh, even though the bike shops might already have this, you're going to be paying that $880 if you bought this bike today. Now just to give you an idea about the pricing of bikes, this is Trek's Dual Sport 3 bike. This is the direct competitor to the Rome 2. Uh, and in some ways I think that the Rome 2 is a little better, at least a better fit for me anyway, and there's nothing wrong with the dual sport bike. I actually went to purchase the dual sport bike and found out that I really like the Rome bike instead, but you can see the price of this bike is $930, which is about $50 more than the Rome 2. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the Rome bikes actually, uh, as the numbers decrease, it's a better bike. Uh, so a Rome 1 is the best bike in that uh, the Rome uh, category, whereas the Dual Sport's the opposite. So the higher number the bike for the Dual Sport um, the better the bike. So Dual Sport 4 is the best bike. So both the Rome 2 and the Dual Sport 3 are the like the second best bikes in their categories. Most everything that you see on these two bikes are going to be comparable but I did want to point out a couple of things and this is the specs on the left is for the Giant Rome 2 and to the right is the Trek uh, Dual Sport 3. Uh, one of the things, the forks are going to be almost identical but, but you're going to see a difference when you get to the derailleurs. Notice that the Giant on the left uh, doesn't have a front derailleur. That's because it's a 1x9 system. And then the rear derailleur is a Shimano Dior, which is a higher model than what they have on the Trek. Uh, and so the Trek is a, uh, uh, the cassettes are almost identical. Uh, the Giant has just a little bit better uh, cassettes, so Shimano HD201, while the Trek is the HD200, but they're both 1136 and they're 9 speeds. But the uh, derailleur on the Trek, the front, is a Shimano Acera, and the back is a Shimano Alivio. So there's just a little bit better equipment on the Giant for less price than on the Trek. I've always heard that Giant was just a little better bang for your buck. You know, you get a little better equipment for a better price with the Giants. I might be wrong about that. If you know different, please comment below. Uh, again, I'm, I had a Trek mountain bike for years, and I love my Trek mountain bike, and I think the Dual Sport's a great bike. Uh, but that is the reason that I chose the Giant 2 this time over the Dual Sport 3. So enough about comparing the two different bikes. Let's look specifically at the Giant Rome 2. Now I'm going to start with the equipment that I would consider mediocre at the best. Uh, that's the one thing that I'm not super crazy about the bike. But again, it's, it's the same standard that you're going to find in all the bikes in this price range. But the front fork on the Giant Rome 2 is the SR Suntour NEX HLO 700C. Now that fork has a travel of 63 millimeters and the good thing about it is that you can lock it out. So if you're riding around town a bunch, you can actually lock this out. Um, I tend to keep it on all the time just because it's nice if you go over some rough, uh, if you go on a sidewalk or something like that, it gives you a little extra comfort. Next we're going to talk about something that I love about this bike and that's the gear set. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, the great thing about this bike is that it is a one by so there's no front derailleur uh, so it's a one by nine 
and uh, which is a lot of times you find in more expensive mountain bikes but this bike actually has that same gear setting and so I, I really enjoy this this is one of the things that sold me for this model over the other other models uh, is so that you don't have to worry about as many gears uh, it's fast enough for me uh, riding around town and yet if I want to hit a light trail then then I can do that and we'll talk about who specifically this bike is made for at the end now as far as the shifter goes, um, there is a discrepancy on the website uh, that says that the shifter is a um, Shimano Atlas. It is actually a Shimano Dior, which is a more expensive shifter, but uh, you can see here that it, it has the Dior shifter. Now I do want to talk about one thing I'm not crazy about the bike is that the shifter is a little crowded uh, and so it's a little harder to downshift. Uh, you can see I actually got on the wrong thing, got on my brake lever there. Uh, but again, this is pretty standard for these type of bikes. It's just something that I wanted to point out that's a little aggravating. Now, it is a one by, so there's no front derailleur. There is this protective um, guide around the chain that keeps your pant leg out of the chain, and, and uh, that's pretty handy to have, obviously, if you're riding on the road a bunch. And then, as I mentioned before, the uh, rear cassette is a uh, Shimano HD201 9 speed. And then the rear derailleur is your uh, Shimano Dior, um, which is fantastic. It has this nice feature where it locks it in place if you want to. And so that way, if you hit a bump, it doesn't uh, uh, cause your chain to come off. And so you can turn that off and on, as I'm showing you here. But that is just a fantastic feature of this bike. And, and again, this is one of the reasons I just absolutely love this bike uh, compared to other ones in its category. Uh, is this one by nine system. Now the seat or the saddle is nothing special. It's the giant sport comfort saddle. It's okay, uh, just like most bikes in this category. I do want to mention one thing about the seat post. It might be a little hard to see in this video, but if you look real close at the very back, it's flat, and this is to help the shock for the seat. All right, so let's move into the brakes. The brakes on this bike is really good, and actually this is one of the big things that differentiate the Rome uh, 2 with the Rome 3, the cheaper version. Uh, this actually has uh, Tektro M275 hydraulic brakes. Um, the brake levers are, techno, are Tektro M275s as well. These are not mechanical hydraulic, but they're actually the fluid hydraulic brakes. And again, they work really well for this uh, a bike in this price range. Okay, before we get into the tires, let's talk just about who this bike is for and who it is not for and why I purchased this bike. So I'm a person who likes to ride my bike to work. I live a couple of miles from work and, and I like to ride my bike whenever I can. But at the same time, I also like to hit a few light trails. I'm not a hardcore trail rider and also I'm not looking to run any type of uh, bike race or anything like that with this bike. So one thing to keep in mind about this bike is you do sit more aggressive, kind of like you would a mountain bike uh, on this bike. So this is not a, uh, a bike for somebody looking for the more comfort type of bikes that uh, sit you, where you sit more straight up. Uh, but at the same time, it has less knobby tires, and so it's better for the road uh, than mountain bikes are. And so that's the reason that you need to keep in mind if you are uh, looking to do a lot of trails and, and I would say hard trails, this is not the bike for you. And at the same time, if you don't plan on getting on any trails at all, then this is probably not the bike for you either. This is for those people like me who's kind of in between both ways for that. So uh, one of the uh, things to look at is the tires on this bike. When we compare this to the FX, uh, that I've got here. You can see that the FX is uh, more of the, your 700 millimeter um, uh, row tires, whereas these 700 millimeter tires are more wide. Uh, it gives you a little more grip. And so some of those things is you need to keep in mind if you're thinking about purchasing this bike. So in closing, I think this bike is just a great, excellent bike for the money, especially comparing it to other bikes in its class. And I really hope that this review has helped you out. And so if it has, please take the time to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.